good morning dear students in our last lecture we have derived the van der waals equation for real gases so in the present lecture we will continue with the limitations of van der waals equation as we have already gone through the van der waals theory according to which it was assumed that a and b are constant at all temperature and pressures but experimentally it has been found that the value of a and b do not remain constant at all temperature and pressure they are dependent on temperature and pressure especially at very high pressure or very low temperature so what was observed it was observed that at high pressure the value of b which is known as the effective volume that decreases similarly at low temperature the molecules come closer to each other due to which the intermolecular forces of attraction increases which leads to the increase in the value of a so under the conditions of high pressure and low temperature the value of b decreases and value of a increases similarly the value of van der waal constant they also depend upon the nature of gas it has been found that for the gases having big molecules the value of b is large as well as the value of a is also large the reason being due to large surface area of the big molecules there will be strong intermolecular forces of attraction it will lead to the increase in the value of a similarly for the big sized molecule the effective volume will be more so what we uh, generalize from here that van der waal equation can't be generalized for all the gases it is of limited accuracy if we want to apply this equation to any gas we must know the value of a and b for that gas as these values are directly dependent on the nature of the gas so the value of a and b are varying with the nature of the gas so we can't generalize this equation to all the gases we must know the value of a and b for that particular gas only then we will be apply to uh, this equation to that gas now next one is the concept of boil's temperature we have already studied the plots of compressibility factor versus pressure for a particular gas at different temperatures this plot is similar to the plot of pv versus p for the particular gas at different temperatures so we have uh, gone through all these curves and we very well know as the temperature is raised the minima in the curve shift upward and towards the pressure axis this minima is moving upward as well as it is moving to the left side towards the pressure p is equal to 0 axis so at boil's temperature what happens the value of z remains close to 1 for example in this case for nitrogen the value of z remain close to 1 at 50 degree celsius over a large range of pressure such a temperature at which a real gas is behaving like an ideal gas or it is obeying the boil's law over an appreciable pressure range is known as boils temperature now if you want to derive the mathematical expression for the boils temperature then we very well know that for the condition of minima the derivation of the term along y axis with respect to the term along x axis must be zero now along the y axis we can have either pv or the compressibility factor z along the x axis we are having pressure so for the condition of minima the derivative of this pv with respect to the pressure should be zero 
so curly pv by curly p would be equal to 0 for the condition of minima now at boil's temperature what happens this minima exist close to the pressure p is equal to 0 axis so we are having here the limit p tending to 0 at boil's temperature when the minima condition is followed when the minima is appearing at close to p in that case we are getting this expression for the boils temperature that limit p tending to 0 curly pv by curly p is equal to 0 on calculating this we will get that the boils temperature is equal to a by r b where a and b are the van der waals constant and r is the gas constant so this is all about the boils temperature now next one is critical phenomena and critical constants we very well know the gas molecules are moving constantly in different directions with different velocities so these molecules are possessing a definite amount of kinetic energy now as we will decrease the temperature the kinetic energy of molecules will decrease and the molecules will become slower and come closer to each other now if cooling is continued what you will see a stage is reached when the intermolecular forces of attraction become so strong that the gas starts liquefying so by cooling the gas at a particular stage the gas will be converted into the liquid similarly if we are keeping the temperature constant and increasing the pressure on the gas what you will see the molecules are coming closer and ultimately a stage is reached when the gas starts liquefying so this is the effect of pressure on the gas at constant temperature and that was the effect of decreasing temperature at constant pressure on a gas now out of effect of temperature and pressure what you will see the effect of temperature is more significant for example if your gas is having temperature above a particular value then what you will observe above that temperature the gas is not being able to liquefy it howsoever high you pressure you are applying on the gas above this temperature you won't be able to liquefy the gas how much pressure you can apply on the gas howsoever you are applying pressure on the gas but you won't be able to liquefy the gas above that temperature and such a temperature of the gas is known as critical temperature so how we can define this critical temperature critical temperature of a gas may be defined as that temperature above which the gas can't be liquefied howsoever high pressure you are applying on the gas now what do you mean by critical pressure this is defined as the minimum pressure which is required to liquefy the gas at critical temperature above this temperature you are not being able to liquefy the gas so this is the pressure required at condition of critical temperature at which the gas gets liquefied now what do you mean by critical volume it is defined as the volume occupied by one mole of the gas at conditions of critical temperature and critical pressure now all these three critical temperature critical pressure and critical volume they are collectively known as critical constants of the gas now next one is experimental measurement of the critical constants of a gas how we can experimentally measure these critical constants so first one is the measurement of critical temperature and critical pressure now the measurement of critical temperature is based upon an observation what is that observation when a liquid 
it may be either an ether carbon dioxide or any other liquid which is heated in a closed space what you will see as you are heating that liquid the surface of separation between the liquid and vapors disappears at a definite temperature as you are heating that liquid ultimately a stage is reached at a definite temperature the surface of separation between the liquid and the vapor disappears now if you reverse the process means on cooling decreasing the temperature the surface of separation again reappears at the same temperature now the temperature at which this occurs is known as the critical temperature now the apparatus uh, which will be used to measure the critical temperature that will also simultaneously give the measurement of critical pressure as we can see in the next slide so this is the apparatus required to measure the critical temperature and critical pressure simultaneously in this apparatus what we are having a glass bulb a is containing only the liquid and its vapors sealed over mercury this bulb is connected to a manometer m containing air above the mercury this bulb a is surrounded by a heating jacket which is required to increase or decrease the temperature during the process a thermometer is placed in the heating jacket to measure that temperature simultaneously now first one the bulb a is heated gently by circulating hot water in the heating jacket now what happens as the liquid is continued to heat at a particular temperature the meniscus between the liquid and the vapor phase disappears and this temperature is noted from the thermometer now this bulb is allowed to cool till the meniscus reappears due to the condensation of vapors again this temperature is noted by using the thermometer now the mean of these two temperature gives us the critical temperature of the gas enclosed in bulb a now how we will measure the corresponding pressure the corresponding pressure is noted from the manometer at the two stages simultaneously for example when the meniscus disappears the pressure is noted from the manometer suppose this is p1 again when the meniscus reappears suppose uh, the pressure noted from the manometer is p2 then taking the mean of p1 and p2 will give us the mean of these two uh, pressure values giving critical pressure of the gas so by using this apparatus we are simultaneously measuring the critical temperature and critical pressure of a gas now next one is the measurement of critical volume now in case of critical volume we can't directly determine it experimentally the reason being a slight change in temperature and pressure produces a large change in the volume so to solve the problem the vc was determined indirectly using a rule that was given by calitet and mathias in 1886 now according to that rule what does it state it states that the mean of densities of any substance in the state of liquid and saturated vapor at the same temperature is a linear function of the temperature what does it says if the density of a substance is measured in the state of liquid as well as in the vapor state at the same temperature at a particular temperature we are measuring the density of a substance in the state of its liquid and vapor state when they are in equilibrium with each other so what you will find the mean of densities of these two liquid and saturated vapor at different temperatures is the linear function of the 
temperature. Now to determine the critical volume of any substance, the densities of the substance in the liquid state and that of the saturated vapor in equilibrium with it are plotted against the temperature. Now from that plot we can easily uh, clarify this rule what it wants to say. What does it explain? As we are looking in this figure, what we have done here, we have taken a substance uh, in its liquid and its vapor state in equilibrium with each other. And we have measured the densities of both the liquid state and the vapor state at different temperatures. So what we are uh, seeing here along the curve AC, the density of vapors is decreasing, uh, increasing along the curve AC with increase in temperature. Similarly, densities of liquid is decreasing along the curve BC with increase in temperature. The reason being with increase in temperature, the vapor pressure is high, more and more vapors are formed. So, density of vapors is increasing and as the temperature is increasing, the liquid molecules are decreasing. So, density of liquid molecules is decreasing along the curve BC. So, what happens when the two curves are extended at a particular point C, the densities of liquid and vapor state become equal. Means, at this point, there will be no surface of separation between liquid and vapor state. So, this point will correspond to the critical density. As the critical temperature both the liquid and the vapor phase they are having same density so we are having uniform density all around so this point at which the density of liquid and vapors become equal that is corresponding to the critical temperature so if we are plotting the mean values of densities of the liquid and vapor state at different temperatures we are getting this straight line dc Along this DC, we are having the mean of the densities of liquid and vapor state at different temperatures. So, we are getting here straight line. It means it is a linear function of the temperature. So, mean of their densities is a linear function of temperature which is according to Gallicat and Mathias rule. Now, this critical density can be determined from the y-axis corresponding to the point C as this C point is corresponding to the critical temperature. So corresponding to this point C from the y-axis we will get the critical density. Now if the critical density is determined we can easily find out the critical volume of the gas as critical volume is equal to the ratio of molecular weight to the critical density. Vc is equal to molecular weight divided by critical density. Critical density we have determined from the graph. Now substituting the value of molecular weight, we can find out the value of Vc. So this is the experimental measurement of critical volume. So next we will do in the next lecture. Thank you.